Greetings everyone and welcome to Calamity Sai Shipyards. I am your host Simon and uh, today I am going to show you basically how I do my favorite hobby which is basically create spaceships and starships using uh, Trimble SketchUp. Uh, I'm going to use the 2017 version. Um, it is available for free download so uh, if you want to try and and do what I'm doing here today, then uh, please go and download it. Uh, as I said, it's a free program. I know there are much better um, software programs out there, such as Blender, uh, but I like SketchUp because uh, number one, it's free, and number two, it's very user-friendly, and the interface is quite intuitive, as we will soon see. So uh, yeah, I've had some requests from people uh, asking me, uh, you know, how do you create uh, your Starships? Um, today I'm going to show you a very quick tutorial on uh, how to do that. So uh, here we have the basic SketchUp 2017 layout, including Bob here with his hands in his pockets. Goodbye, Bob. Okay, so uh, just because I want to make this as simple as possible, um, we're going to do a very, very basic Starship design. So I'm going to use the old kind of 1960s design. It's not going to be absolutely bang on like it was with the original one. Um, I'm just going to show you a kind of rough approximation just to show you how to use the tools and how to get the basic effects um, in order to create a starship kind of shape. And obviously, once you get the hang of that, it gives you a much stronger basis for, for going on and doing your own thing with it, basically. So uh, we're going to use the circle tool here. And this is basically this first part is going to be on creating uh, the saucer section. So classically, the uh, saucer section in the Star Trek universe is called the primary hull. That's where the bridge and everything is located and it tends to be um, a sort of circular shape or oval shape. Uh, the classic ones tend to be circular. So that's what we're gonna go with today. And now you can see here, I've selected the circle tool, clicked in the middle, and now I'm expanding that back and forth to get the, the, the size I want. Now, if I just click on this for now, you can see here as I zoom in, the edges are quite straight. Uh, which is great for saving computer memory, but not so good for the look of it. As you can see, it looks kind of blocky, like an old um, 1980s computer game. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not the best, really, for, for modeling. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Control z keys. So hold down Control and press z to undo. And we're going to try that again. And this time, as we expand the circle... Uh, I don't know if you can see here where I'm pointing in the bottom right hand side, we've got the radius and that tells us how big the circle is in meters. Um, as we're doing that, I'm going to select 6, 0 and then press S. And you can see in the bottom right now it says uh, 60S. And press enter and you can see immediately there the circle is now much, much smoother. Just still have those uh, straight edges to it but now it has 60 of them. Uh, I find 60 is enough to make the circle look nice and smooth uh, without eating up too much um, polygon usage and therefore too much computer memory. So we can't really use a two-dimensional flat disk as a saucer section. We want to have some depth to it and some features. So I'm going to use the push-pull button here and we're going to pull up the disk um, probably by something like in around, you know, three and a half, maybe four meters, roughly. And now we can see we've got an edge to our disc. It's a little bit bigger than we normally would do, but I want everything to be really clearly visible. So uh, typically, I don't know how familiar you are with your Star Trek saucer sections. Uh, the edges of their saucer sections tend not to be straight down like this, especially in the original series. Uh, they tend to be angled. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna make this bottom disc here slightly smaller than the top disc here, okay? In order to do that, we're gonna select it, as I've just done, and I'm gonna hit the scale button, okay? That brings up this grid here, and if I pull at any of these corners, it's gonna expand the disc in that direction. So you can see here, bottom right pulls it to the bottom right, bottom left pulls it to the bottom left, and so on and so forth. Well, we want that the push, push and pull effect to, to be nice and even all around the edges, yeah? So um, instead of just pulling it like so, I'm going to hold down the control key 
and that brings up this little red dot in the middle. Now, as I push and pull, or expand and reduce, you know, that effect is happening nicely, evenly from the center outwards. So I'm gonna reduce the size of that bottom disc by just a little bit, like so. And you can see now that we have a nice tapered edge to our saucer section. Great, so from there, uh, we're going to create a little dome effect uh, on the surface, on the top of it. We don't want just a flat disc. So watch what I do now. I'm going to create a straight line from the edge of the saucer straight through to the middle. I'm going to go up on the blue axis. I'm going to make this super big for now. And then draw a straight line back down to the edge or the circumference line there. You can see now I've got this little triangle shape, okay? Now, I'm gonna use the Follow Me tool, which is this one here. Click on that, and you can see here that it's automatically uh, extruded that shape all around the edge and given me this kind of cone shape here. Um, all right to give you the basic premise of how push and pull works, but it's still not quite the right shape. I really wanna eventually have a, a flat top here so that I can put my bridge module on top. And ideally, I like the edges here to be sort of curved rather than straight. Um, you want a nice domed effect rather than this kind of like TP effect here. So uh, let's get rid of that. Control Z again. And this time, we're going to make some adjustments. So first off, I'm going to draw a horizontal line across here. Okay, anything that goes along uh, the red line there means it's perfectly parallel uh, with the horizontal plane. Okay. Using the eraser tool, let's get rid of all these unwanted lines. That's going to give me a nice little flat circle at the top where I can place my bridge dome. And now to get this curved effect, we're going to go for the um, curve tool or the arc tool. Click to the top and the bottom. And we're just going to create this little dome effect here. Let's just zoom in a bit. Okay. Go down a bit. Now, this is quite useful here. This is demonstrated here where just because I've done it at this angle, it hasn't gone along the right line of axis like I wanted it to. It's gone horizontal. Uh, can't really do much with that. That's a bit of a boo boo. Let's control Z that. Try that again. There we go. And you can see here that the angles differ. It can be a bit fiddly. I'm sure there are better ways of doing this. So uh, if you want to, you can leave a comment in the comment section. But now we can see that I've got that sort of curved edge exactly as I wanted it. And I'm going to get rid of that line. So I can select that surface as a whole now. And another way of doing the push pull is to select that surface, hold it down, and then with your mouse, just follow along the edge of the circle. It's a slightly longer way of doing it. Uh, but you'll see sometimes as you do different shapes, it's handy to actually trace your, uh, your mouse all the way along the edge. And there we go. Now I've got that nice domed surface with a little flat top that I was after earlier. Okay. All right, now, yeah, it looks a little bit too deep there. Uh, we want the saucer section to be a little bit more shallow than that. So I'm going to select the disc at the top and the dome surface. And this time we're going to use that scale key again. And because it's got a bit of depth to it, we now have the blue scale. And we're just going to reduce that down just to make it a little bit shallower and provide a slightly sleeker profile to our saucer section. Okay, now uh, I'd like to do that again on the bottom. Um, let's just demonstrate a slightly different way of doing it. So let's say, for example, uh, I wanted to create again a, another kind of like a domed shape, uh, but I want the curve to be uh, slightly concave this time rather than the other way. <laughs> All right, so created that same flat bottom and straight edge. And this time, what I'm gonna do, 
another curve, but this time I'm going to go inwards ever so slightly instead of outwards. Okay, we'll just do that along there. Very slight curve. Like so. Get rid of that straight line. Just flip it upside down for a sec. And use that same follow me tool. And again, we'll go all around the edges. Beautiful. All right, now I've got a kind of bottom that looks a little bit like a spinning top. Yep. Yeah? Again, a little bit too deep. So we're going to use the same method we used before. Click on the little circle and the kind of cone area. And we're going to use that scale button to just make it a bit shallower. Grand. And there we go. We now have a saucer section which is starting to look a lot more familiar to all you Star Trek and Starship fans out there. All right. So uh, I'll leave it there. That's part one. Uh, maybe you'd like to go back and watch this video from the beginning and uh, try your hand at this yourself. Good luck on that, and I'll be back for part two, where we're going to work on the engineering hole, which is the kind of cylindrical section. Okay, see you later.